Okay, first I want to talk about GDP, and so I want you to focus on the red. Um, I'm going to do some equations and some problems in blue, and we'll, we'll move the camera over, but focus on the red for right now. I want to talk about gross GDP, or gross domestic product. And what this is, is a measurement of the sale of all final goods and services. This is how we measure how much stuff our economy is making, so we can measure how well our economy is doing. Okay? And this is in, this is made in the United States borders. So, for example, um, America like, has companies that make stuff in China or Mexico, that's not counted the GDP. But there are companies that are foreign countries that make stuff in America, for instance, Toyota. That is counted the GDP. So it's all domestically made, the measurement of all the sale of final goods and services made in the borders of the United States. And this is a really important measurement for economists to see how we're doing because it um, specifically relates to prices and it specifically relates to employment. And then a measurement of this can also tell us how we're growing or not growing as an economy. Um, example, you've heard the term recession. A recession is a measurement of our GDP. If we have two three-month three periods called quarters, we have two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth and we're officially in a recession. So GDP is important to economists. It's not a perfect measurement, but it's a good one. And we have nominal GDP and we have real GDP. Nominal is in that year. It's, it's the GDP of a certain year with no inflation taken into account. It's just how much total sale of final goods and services. Whereas the real GDP is where you back out um, inflation. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But the equation for nominal GDP is G plus I plus C plus X. Where government, it, government spending is G, specifically that relates to building stuff, um, not necessarily like not necessarily like Social Security spending or Medicare spending, but um, on building equipment, on building roads, things that are going to um, give us jobs. The I stands for investment. And when we say investment, we're not talking about stocks and bonds. That's not investment. That would be a transfer of assets. Investment when it comes to GDP is buying capital goods, buying robotics, investing in research. These are, these are investments we make that are going to affect the GDP later. In fact, I usually is the smallest part. Actually, X tends to be negative in America. But uh, on the positive side, I is not a huge part of the GDP, but it tends to be the engine for growth. So a, a high investment total will lead to, hopefully in the future, us uh, building a better economy. Increases in technology tend to come from research done from I. Um, more productivity tend to come from robotics and capital goods investments from I. C, our consumer spending, is by far in America the largest portion of GDP. In fact, it's two-thirds of America's GDP. And when we say consumer spending, we're saying buying final goods and services made in America. Um, I'll get more of that in a minute. And finally, X is net exports or exports minus imports, right? In America, we're actually negative here. We want to increase our exports to increase GDP. With um, consumer spending, you have to be careful about double counting. So, um, for instance, when we buy a car, like if I buy a Toyota Camry, that would count for consumer spending. However, um, we wouldn't count the brakes or the engine that goes into it because that's in the final sale. That shows up in the final sale. If So the tires, for instance, aren't a separate part of GDP. It's just the car. Now, if we go to a tire store and buy new tires to replace those, that would count because that's a separate purchase. Um, if your parents build a house, that's considered an investment because um, that's a capital good. It will increase in value, so it's a capital good. But if your parents go and buy a house that's already been built, that isn't counted as consumer spending or an investment because the house has already been bought. So we want to make sure we don't double count. For instance, um, if I buy a used car, we don't count that towards the GDP because it had originally been counted when the car was bought new. So you have to be very careful on the double count, and it's a very hard process figuring out what is in GDP because so many goods and services are purchased and sold in America. Um, you have to be careful on the double, the double count. Okay, um, 
and there is a there is a um, an activity that we'll do to sort of differentiate what is and what is not counted. So, um, for instance, if we buy goods made in Ch in China, then that wouldn't count because that was overseas. Um, in terms of the real GDP, this is GDP t when inflation is taken out of it. If we want to compare a year's GDP, we have to compare them in real value. Because uh, I'll show you in a second, um, if inflation goes up, the final sales might look like GDP is going really, really well, but it might just be that we had a lot of inflation. So to compare every year, we have to back inflation out. So our formula for that is real GDP equals the nominal GDP of that one year divided by the price index times 100. Okay? And that's how we get it. And I want to show you here in blue, I'll move the camera over, how you can have a year that looks like it's a better year, but actually because of inflation was a worse year. Okay? So you can see this is year one and this is year two. Year one, G equals 100, I 50, C 300, and you can see this, the index is 125. So year one's GDP is 450, whereas year two's GDP, and you can see the numbers, are 550. So just by looking at nominal GDPs, you'd think year two was better than year one. That's before we back out inflation. Because the price indexes, the, the measurement of inflation is only 125 for year one, whereas the price index in year two is 175. So if we use the equation we just learned where real GDP equals nominal GDP over the price index times 100, we see that real GDP is 450, which is the nominal, over the price index is 125 times 100, and our real GDP ends up being 360. For year two, our nominal GDP is 550, our index is 175, so we have 550 over 175 times 100, and that gives us 314. So actually, even though year one had a lower nominal GDP, once inflation is taken out of it, we see that in real value, year one was better in terms of production. And that's why we have price indexes, so we can compare years um, more accurately. Because if we didn't take inflation into it, then prices could go up dramatically, which would reduce our purchasing power and our standard of living, but it would look like we were a lot richer. So once we back inflation out of it, then you can compare apples to apples. So what we've learned, and if you have questions, you can go back and you can redo this on your calculators if you like, but we've talked about nominal GDP. We talked about well, we've talked about what GDP is. We talked about nominal GDP, real GDP. You've gotten the um, equation for real GDP. Um, you should have written down what is in each part of GDP and a couple examples of um, putting this together. Okay. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. There are activities that go along with this.